Hey everyone, it's Nathan. Uh, I'm coming to you here before we start the podcast uh, with the approval of the other rats um, to just kind of, I don't know, go over a little information here. Um, as many of you, uh, perhaps there's some of you that uh, in the recent election voted conservative that listen, I, I would be a little shocked uh, with how progressive we are uh, on the show, but you're more than welcome to continue to listen. But this is more, of course, to those, and my, my guess is the majority, if not all, uh, of our listeners um, that kind of land on the other side of the political spectrum. Um, I think it's not, uh, you know too much to say that uh, this last election really sort of hit a lot of people hard. I think they thought um, that there was no way certain things were going to happen, There's and there's no way that um, that man will get reelected, um, and there's a lot of fear right now. What I want to say, uh, and I'm, I, you know, with the approval, as I said, of, of everybody else on the podcast, is just a couple things I think that are helpful. One is be kind to yourself and others. Um, I recognize, sort of, in a moment of clarity, which I think happens when you kind of go through a little bit of visceral trauma, um, that I know nothing about my local city council, and I seem to know a lot about wars happening on the other side of the world. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to know things about what's going on in the world. I'm not saying it's wrong to not advocate for things going on on the other side of the world. Uh, but are you advocating is a question that I've been asking myself a lot. Um, are you giving money if you can? Are you giving help? Uh, if you're just posting something online, you're not doing anything, actually. You're just sharing in the quicksand of gloom and doom about the election or other stuff going on in the world. And... While it might feel good to know that others feel the same you do when they give you the like, which is a weird thing that we do now, right? Like a sad post, but um, it's not actually helping anybody, right? It's not doing anything. And I've been thinking a lot about, you know, what would it be like if we actually knew our neighbors better? And what if we knew what was going on in our own communities? And some of our communities are going to be easier than others, for sure. Um, but look in, zoom in a little bit. Take care of yourself. Perhaps you don't need to follow a bunch of stuff. I recently, right after the election, I deleted all the politics podcasts, all the YouTube channels, all the commentators that I follow on social media. Of course, I'm not on X anymore whatsoever. Um, uh, Blue Sky, you can find me there. Um, and I did that because I can't do anything about any of that. I can't. And and it's hard sometimes. I, I like to know stuff and it makes me feel like I'm in control and I'm not but I am in control of what I take in and and I think it's a good idea and would behoove a lot of us if we started being kinder to ourselves about what we consume and taking that extra energy that we don't lose because we're sapping it away on doom uh, and using it to give time or monetary funds or assistance of some way to organizations that can be helpful. So that's just, that's what I've been going through on that end. And I think it might be something that resonates with some of you. Another thing, and this is more of a, a little factoid. I'm sure the, the thing will adjust as, as time goes on because we're still getting in election data, but the country doesn't actually hate you. Uh, if, if uh, you are, thinking that they do. And I know that sounds absurd, right? Didn't 50%, over 50% of the election just say that they disagree with my life or who I am? Yeah, that's true. That actual percentage of the United States population was about 22%. That's it. 22%. And it only makes those people uh, happier that do actually <laughs> hate uh certain groups and certain people uh, that you're scared, that you think that they are larger than 22%. And by the way, of that 22%, there's a large chunk that, believe it or not, and as absurd as it sounds, exclusively voted because of economics. They actually don't care at all about cultural issues. I know that sounds crazy. But I'm going to guess that less than 22% of this entire country actually voted for what we are about to experience. Um, in that way, 
And that means that the other portion, albeit some children and babies and such that don't actually vote, but the rest can make their voices heard. So in this time when it feels really scary and really alone uh, and, and, you know, like you're not part of some team, um, you are 22%, 22%. Now that said, feel free, especially if you feel like you are in the most marginalized groups in, in this country, feel free to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. There's nothing wrong and you shouldn't feel ashamed about, you know, updating your passport or whatever you feel you need to do to feel safe. In this kind of time, it's good to just do those things. So keep that in mind. You're not alone. Be kind to yourself. It's good. All right. Now, if things are getting really, really bleak for you and you find even that kind of stuff not helpful, the Suicide and Prevention Helpline in America is 988, okay? And we're all in this together, and there's no shame in giving that number a call if you feel like you're all alone. You are loved, and whatever happens next, we'll do it together, okay? That's what rats do. <laughs> we gather, and we become a big rat king, and we take care of things, <laughs> So don't worry. That's what we do. Here's the show. This podcast contains some magical adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And sorry, Mom. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to Whoa, 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 whoa. You are not Mickey Mouse. You are a rat. Rat schmack. Besides, they're tourists. What do they know? Welcome to Rat Castle, a progressive chat about theme park magic without the pixie dust. I am Nathan Hartman, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, it's Christmas once again here in November, because <laughs> as as theme park nerds know, once it turns over, you kick you just kick those pumpkins, you shatter them, and we gotta get up them Santa hats. Oh, you're you're making Gabe cry. My heart. My Halloween heart. Your Halloween heart. We'll talk more, but we have some Halloween news. We have some, we're going to go over some stuff for sure. First, let me introduce the rats for this evening. Joining us uh, as the uh, replacement of his dear, very pregnant still sister, uh, who is on maternity leave uh, in, in, in for, for a while, because that's what you need for a She a is spawn. literally in labor right now. I've been texting with her all day. She's really? in the hospital. <laughs> uh, she oh is my currently... God. Hunched That's over awesome. an inflatable ball, um, okay. Uh, going through the experience of human labor, um, gang. This is a first. This yeah. is a first for the Rat Castle podcast. Yeah. If we would have planned it better, I would have had her on as well. We could have just <laughs> that would have been she's, fantastic. She's leaning yeah. over that ball right now, saying, "I want to share my themed entertainment opinions." <laughs> it's yeah. true. Probably we're gonna, guys. I've we're never have met a baby rat. We're gonna have a little baby Ooh. rat. Uh, I uh, truly she never she hates missing uh, she loves 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 being on and she will ignore my advice of taking more time than she needs uh, off <laughs> uh, I'm sure she'll be here before too long but uh, uh, as always we love when Bri is here hello Bri how are you hi uh, you know <laughs> okay right yeah, yeah. Uh, as uh, as as the environment holds, you know. Yeah. So you know, I, I have some some peppy news. Uh, I've been I've been working on some peppy stuff. Uh, but let's introduce everybody else too. Dave, hello, Dave. It's so good to see you. I know I've been away for so long working, but thank yes. you for uh, having me back. Doing, you know what? You got to do magic, and you get it. You're doing some secret magic too. It's not like secret it's so magic. it's so secret. Shh, shh. It's so secret. In fact, it's so secret. Most of you will never see it. That's a no, <laughs> you won't. And that's the funny thing is people keep yeah. people keep texting me guessing because they see me where I'm traveling and it's, it's in Florida, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh my god, you're working on Epic." I'm like, "Epic opens no. in six months. Once, yeah. what would I be yeah. doing on Epic? Like nothing. Yeah. No, it's not Epic, nothing. and it's not a theme park, not and it. you're never gonna guess it. So when I can he's talk working about it, I'll for talk about it. he's working for a uh, a mad millionaire creating a will based game. For when they die, um, I, w I, I wish I. That sounds that would like be the awesome. base of a horror movie. Sounds oh, like yeah. a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, themed entertainment designer hired to like create a series of tests or curses or whatever. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. 
for sure to fake sure. it but in, it, it turns out that he's actually haunting the place or something that would oh my awesome. god Ooh. Yeah. sounds like the second Wait. sequel to ready yeah, or you not. and i are writing this yes We're writing this. oh yeah all right Let's copyrighted do it. copyrighted copyrighted rat castle industries um <laughs> rat castle productions <laughs> Indus- industries 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 <laughs> uh actually no this is actually a seven this is seven ten product you know i never talked about it like all of a sudden uh i started doing the other uh podcast producing it for dan becker and i just needed to create a production company because i'm now doing multiple things and so at the end of this you've probably seen 710 productions that's that's my company we'll just do it we'll just do another 710 production let's do it um you know uh anyway last but not least our guest for this evening uh straight from theme park duo it's gabe gabe how are you gabe i'm doing good just had a nice full dinner with the other two which Mm. The other half of the duo is my wife. That's Nicole. That's Nikki, as she goes by. And then the unofficial third wheel of the of the crew is our daughter, which quite literally every every human being that knows us keeps asking, "When is she going to join? When are you changing the name?" And I say, "Shut the hell up! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not going to yeah. happen." Because uh, the moment it happens, we're going to have another one, and then everyone's going to be like, "When are you changing the name again?" <laughs> yeah. So. No, but uh, I'm doing good. Really excited to chat with you guys. Love talking themed entertainment, regardless of the nonsensical nature of it or not. So yes. I'm pumped. I'm ready. Uh, we love it. And as I mentioned, Christmas time is here in Theme Park World. Yeah. I have celebrated. I, 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 Katie told me very, very much the last last year at this time because in Florida, November first hit and my tree would go up. And it would go up because in Florida, there is literally nothing that tells you what Christmas is. You just have to make Christmas for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And honestly, if it wasn't for the parks, I think I would even have felt less Christmassy. But now I live in Maryland, and we get cold-ish sometimes, um, and sometimes a little bit of snow. And so she's like, no, we have seasons. You can't do it until, like, around Thanksgiving. (laughs) Um, I fully understand that, but I had a, uh, she loves this local online. It's this website. It's kind of like eBay, but it's only for auctioneers in, in your local area or like lot companies. And they put lots of stuff on literally. Um, and, uh, there was a bunch of Christmas village stuff, uh, d- different scale sizes and whatever. So, uh, I got like Five lots for thirty dollars of these old nineteen nineties Christmas village porcelain village yeah, that's things. That's cool. Yeah, and then I, I, you know, uh, eight of them stayed. I have the rest. The rest of the junk was a couple weird stuff, and then like size scale. I had a gazebo that was the same size as my courthouse, and I was like, that's not gonna work. Um, so I, everything's now scaled up. So I have eight. Uh, I, I bought lights for them. So for fifty dollars, I have. Uh, a whole eight figure Christmas village. I'm very, very happy. It's all set up now. Um, so I'm, I'm getting into the spirit a little bit already. Uh, and so is Disney. And we're going to get into that with the, oh, I should say before we, uh, you know, get into the, the news. I don't want to, if I say it too loud, the, the, the music plays. Um, uh, Bri, if for some reason she like delivers her child while we're here, you're more than welcome to interrupt at any time. Um, that would be, Perfect. That'd be um, great. That'd be great. Uh, uh, based it, on the current timeline, I don't think it's going to happen. So no, you know, nah. well, this is the first ever fourteen-hour podcast. So you never know. Uh, yeah. Well, then, yeah, we might get it in in this this fourteen-hour yeah. podcast. Yeah. The news. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do a little bit of news here. We are going to start over at the just general walt disney world resort um that loves your money and and <laughs> no, don't. what are you talking about <laughs> yeah you're they right. love our money <laughs> nonsense nonsense they said keep that keep it it's free uh brian we have a new way of spending your money um is this new? Way, i mean it, the, the i mean I the feel celebration like isn't new the theme is yeah new. yeah the theme and is the price new, is but new. i feel like prefix is higher <laughs> It's is probably it? higher. Yeah, it's probably higher. Yeah. I mean, what price isn't higher these days? But um True. Uh yeah, so um evidently Magic Kingdom is uh well Walt Disney World uh and the Magic Kingdom Fireworks are going to have their own New Year's uh event happening at the California Grill. Um and uh it will be themed to uh Tiana in Cohen coinciding with Tiana's Bayou Adventure that Bayou Adventure is now extending outwards to New Year's Eve. Um the offering will take place on December 31st, of course, from 730 to 1230. Uh, and the 
price includes a prefix menu, uh, various performances, surprised uh, critter guests. Um, Wait, surprised the critter, critter guests? So the critters are going to be surprised? Yes. Or are we going to be surprised at what critters I, are I attending? I believe we will be surprised and delighted by the okay. critters that What if both? By. What Got if they it. just throw They're a like, raccoon oh. in the middle of everybody? Oh, oh, and everybody God, I would love that. I, I would <laughs> love that. Have you guys seen the LaGuardia video of the raccoon that fell through the ceiling at LaGuardia? No. That's no, but that checks out. Oh, it's I think so I saw good. it at O'Hare once. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Um, it reminds me of the time I was on uh, River Adve- well, Jurassic World: The Ride, and a raccoon was in the raft, and everyone was freaking out, and it was like trying to escape. And, um, <laughs> your your raft? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, we were about to get on the raft, and we were getting on the raft, and then a raccoon kind of bolted onto the raft, and then uh, it bounced off the raft, and it was just like that poor guy. Yeah, he had Universal terrified. Express. He had Universal oh, it Express. Has to do. It just... Three legs only. Also, what? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. The story it was gets better and better. That, yeah, uh, a three-legged sick raccoon? raccoon. Yeah, I, yeah. Sick I have raccoon. video of it. I'll share it sometime. Please, um, please do. do. Please yeah. do. Uh, I just I love raccoons. Who doesn't love raccoons? And then he scampered <laughs> off. Yeah. He scampered off and met a couple other raccoons, and and you looked at them and you said, "They do move in herds. They <laughs> certainly do. They certainly do." Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got a variety of food stations. We've got a chilled appetizer section. We've got a wood burning appetizer section. We've got a sushi station, a hot seafood section, a uh, grill, rotisserie, desserts, and an open bar with specialty you cocktails. Better be. It better it be. Better be yeah. It better yeah. be. It better be an open bar. It better be. For the low, low price Christ- of... The low, low Christ- price Christ- of $800. Good God! Wait, Pre-tax. no, seven ninety nine, please. Seven ninety nine. Yeah, seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Yeah, and you know you're, you're gonna have to tip me? your waiter. You're gonna have to like tip somebody. There's no way you're you better. I mean, it, fuck and that. That's, <laughs> and that's per, and that's per person. Per person. My so God! If, if you go as a couple, okay. This I, is I a just have to say, hundred dollar night. One thing, which is, I was a. Uh, a concierge for a very high end boutique hotel in Manhattan for many years. And uh, New Year's Eve events are everywhere and mm-hmm. they are so expensive. Um, really? and you could be getting far less for this price at many other places in New York City. So, I mean, if, if you decided to spend the holidays at Walt Disney World and you're in that particular tax bracket, this is, you know, probably Chump change. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I wasn't actually that shocked by the price of this, given that it's Disney in 2024. Um, yeah, yeah, and it yeah. So I just I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. So I, that's mainly the, the offerings are pretty shocked. significant. You know, they have a lot of stuff. Um, we could do a nice dent uh, to the bourgeoisie if just one of those fireworks just kind of <laughs> goes right in, went right you know? into California Grill. <laughs> yeah, you are yeah. the grill. Yeah, you are the grill now. <laughs> Yes, you are the grill uh, now. We now, now see, can eat the rich. Um, do, yeah. do they have beignets, though? Yeah, I, Every I'm single sh- time that there's a freaking Tiana anything, there's never freaking beignets. I was going to say absolutely, of course, but then I looked at the desserts menu. So oh, yes. Up. No, there are. There oh, are. thank God. There right. are. <laughs> Whew, thank God. Ooh. They, they ah. buried it with some ch- chicory coffee something or other, but it, okay. it's in there. Which chicory coffee, ugh, I don't know. I mean, that's New Orleans. Yeah. It's New Orleans. Yep. Yeah, uh, I you know what I think this is perfectly themed. There's nothing Tiana loves more than serving rich white people. This is gonna work. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is perfect. Just saying, the, no those problems. tariffs are already well. Apparently, hard right now, aren't they? I mean, to be fair, to be fair, it seems like this may be Tiana's involvement, maybe more in the dinner theater angle of things mm-hmm. rather than the servicing. The serving, um, yeah, that's as true. there Good appears point. to be a mystery woven into the event for the evening that Tiana will um, be working to solve throughout the dinner. A mystery. The one Dave created. Right. This is... <laughs> yes, this is what he's been so There'll busy be a in death. Florida. That, like, Florida. The, like at, 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 at 12.01, like at 12, the lights go out and they come back up again and there's like a dead body on the floor. A, and... a dead gator. Lewis is dead. <laughs> oh, Lewis is like, no. No, no, Lewis. No, not Lewis. <laughs> not Lewis. In my mind, it's the mystery of what happened to that extending lightsaber when Ray dropped down and yeah, put it on the floor. What happened to it after is... that, huh? What that happened? Where'd a, you put it? In a it? warehouse somewhere that is in someone's office right now. Um, Let's not joke dust. around. It's it's in Demaro's office. Yeah, Daddy yeah, Demaro. It's in his office right now. Yeah, most likely. He does not deserve it. He does not deserve it. Uh, how dare he stand 
uh, where he once stood. Um, okay, moving on to more more Bry related material. Uh, one might say dino related. Yeah, uh, and, we are and really less restricted yeah, by class. I would say also less which is restricted I'm by all class. About. Yeah, just the just the uh, admission to Animal Kingdom. So upper middle class. Yeah. Um. Uh. We have Santa is coming to. It's like it's like Santa is uh showing up to say goodbye. Yeah. To Dino Land. Uh. Yeah. Weirdly. Uh. We have some photos too. If you want to tell us a little bit about it, I'll bring up a couple photos. As yeah. Well. So um. I don't know why they didn't do this sooner. So anytime. I, so my birthday is in December, and I would often go to Animal Kingdom for my birthday. And it seems that every time I would go, there would be like a Ducktales overlay. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, it in, still is. In, yeah, yeah. It, is that still happening? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I just never understood why the holidays coincided with Ducktales uh, being. Uh, there. It's Ducktales is just always there because oh. ducks and dinosaurs. That was their connection. That's their connection. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, it was always disappointing. Disappointing to me. This year, however, they're going to be utilizing the uh, gloriously well themed uh, restaurant Asaurus and mm-hmm. uh, taking over a little. Uh, uh, Lanai patio space and transforming oh, it into cute. the 75th uh, holiday party for the Dino Institute. Um, <laughs> All right, that's cute. So it's a staff like the, like party. Co- yeah, staff party. That's great. Yeah, I which I I think is brilliant and I love it. it. Um, the rustic decor of that space and the kitschiness of it works so well with Christmas. Um, mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, it's already up and going. It's going until the 24th, I believe. Um, the For dino lovers and Christmas lovers and that kitsch, I mean, yeah. I'm a fan of all three of those things, and I want to be there. Oh, um, that's so cute. I love that image. It's so cute. And I just think, I mean, it's great that they're embracing it before extinction, you know? Yeah. Um, it makes sense. I wish they could have done it sooner, but uh, I think it's a really lovely way to embrace that space and 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 get some more use out of it before it's gone dr yeah. seeker has a has a, a stocking look yes, at all the does. dinosaurs with the santa hats it's super cute it's so cute it's my very, favorite yeah. my f- i mean i've got a lot of favorite things but uh, as a as a particular dinosaur nerd and a huge fan of carnotaurus which is of course the terrifying uh, uh predatory dinosaur and dinosaur the ride they have a wall-mounted uh carnotaurus head that's like red with white snowflakes on it right next to santa <laughs> and i just yeah i love it i love it's it the best I'm yeah. curious if the image of Santa is just like kind of like a stock image of Santa and they'll go with more of a Santa that's on theme because the Ooh. first thing I thought about was in California Adventure back in the day before it got its whole remodel they brought Santa in but Santa was kind of dressed as like a surfer and he had yeah. a surfboard yeah. and there was a They still uh, do that at Blizzard, or Sandcastle, Typhoon Castle, Lagoon Sandcastle or Blizzard stuff. Beach. Yeah, so like what if they did something along those lines but you know Santa was more on theme for dinosaur Archaeology, Ooh. yeah, well, archaeology, uh, archaeology. Santa. yeah, yeah. Well, here's the I thing I, I noticed. I'll, I'm going to bring it up again. Um, the one thing I will notice uh, about the concept art versus is is not a shock. I remember hearing about this. Uh, we people were talking on social about this concept art, and everyone said that rug is never going to make it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and as much as I think it should, and maybe maybe it's just because it takes a lot of time to create. It definitely didn't make it. Definitely did um, not. I, I'm not holding that against them. I don't like saying concept art is like the need. I mean, it would be amazing, but they're literally getting rid of this a whole land very soon. So a custom rug uh, for the span of like what? A month? A two month. Months, Less than a month. Yeah. It's yeah. just not going to happen. We Something there little, would be nice though. feels very open. We can have a little education yeah. at some point about, you know, what to expect from concept art and why you all need to stop arguing mm. about what's been cut <laughs> for yes. budget you know because what? you saw it in concept because every everybody online listening everybody who talks about that shit online oh universal's cutting mm. the universal monsters because there's less q there's in the model that's not why that's not why at all there's so many other reasons yeah Ugh. anyway sorry off my uh, soapbox there's but a y'all are wrong uh, on on my <laughs> sale box uh you should all head over to the newest episode of fun 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 where we talk with justin martin who uh, was one of the creative directors for Meow Wolf yep. uh, and did tons of concept art. And he said – and we had a very good conversation about what what people should expect from concept oh, art. Oh, cool. And, and the relationship between the concept artist now and the fan community and what that kind of looks like. So oh, very Scott, much I got to listen to that. Yeah, I worked with too. Justin. He's a great guy. Well, 
Well, Dave, you should be listening every week to Fun, Fun, Fun. So I don't know Sorry. what to tell you. I didn't um, even know I've Fun, Fun, Fun existed. I've been making magic myself. <laughs> so Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, Bri, I'm doing a, another podcast. I'm producing it, and I, I, I have commentary, and sometimes I'm uh, the, the co-host for non-guest episodes. With, I didn't with know that. Disney Dan Becker. Yeah. I so, gotta listen to it. It's fun, man. We have a good time, and it comes out weekly. Uh, so uh, check that out. Good episode I on that. Let's. Will. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hit the like and subscribe. We're like of at 850. I need right to make now. some money. Yeah. Need to make some money. Thousand people. Come on. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to move over to Disneyland. Uh, we have some new Christmas offerings coming up here. Uh, Bri, uh, yeah. are you excited about this one? Yeah. Uh- yeah, actually. I mean, I mean, so uh, I mean, I feel like it's a variation on the same sort of thing that they've been doing for some mm-hmm. time now, um, where they have a mariachi band incorporated with Miguel celebrating the holidays. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I feel like he's kind of ever present there in that world. And they just kind of structure the holidays around that whole aesthetic. Um, but this year they're doing. Um, uh, where's my sorry. Uh, so he's their most he's their most popular Mexican character, so of course he's going to be <laughs> front and center. Of yeah. course, of course, and of course for that Halloween, with the three Day of, of the Dead, it you know it's he's like yeah. absolutely vital. How but many, it's, how many it, Mexican characters are there? In uh, I'm thinking Atlantis has one, one? at mm. most, maybe if I remember correctly. Wait, who I mean, is so Mexican? That's, that's two. Who's Mexican uh, in Atlantis? Oh wait, that, no, he's Spanish. No, the the girl. The she's li- Puerto the, Rican. She's Puerto Rican. Yeah. Uh, Not all the same. No. No. Very different. Very Not saying different. it. Very different. Didn't, no. didn't say that. I'm didn't Mexican. That. I'm Mexican, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Dang. I guess this. maybe this is all we got. Yeah, Miguel. <laughs> yeah, Miguel. Um uh, I guess I actually I, in this little piece of information I'm not sure where it is. Uh, is it right outside the uh uh, the theater. I mean, the, it's Carthay Carth- Carth- Circle. Circle. Yeah, Carth- yeah Circle. that's what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, it's probably right in front of the fountain. Yeah, actually, yeah. you could see the fountain behind it. Yeah, yeah typically where they do the five and dime show. Yeah, typically or, they're sequestered off in the Paradise Grill area, um, which mm-hmm. becomes their Mexican the, holiday overlay every those, year. Uh, those back mariachis are standing in the fountain. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, what's it called? It's called Musical Christmas with Mariachi. Uh, was it uh, called? Uh, <laughs> my pronunciation may be uh, incorrect. And in fact, Mariachi so. Alegria de Disneyland and Miguel. yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Damn, yeah. there you go, Dave. <laughs> I learned it by watching you, Gabe. My <laughs> <laughs> uh, many many videos of me just rolling my R's for no reason. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you can do it, do it. Uh, oh, I yeah. think it looks fun, but you're right. I mean, it's sort of like an addition. The next part, though, the next one here, Dave, is completely new, right? Like, we've never seen yeah. this aspect. Yeah. This one's super cute. And this one is back over by uh, um, um, the back side Goofy's of the park. Fly School. Yeah, go Paradise over by Gardens. Sky School and Paradise Gardens and all that. It's called Mirabelle's Gifts of the Season. And it looks so cute. Uh, is, I mean, I'm cute. always down for some Encanto love and... and working like Encanto music into like Christmas themes or, or arranging Christmas songs to sound like they're South American makes me deliriously happy. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's, uh, uh, um, it, it's, uh, um, join Mirabelle from Encanto and her friends as they rejoice over the magical gifts of the holidays with whimsical stories and cherished songs. So it's a Disney street show, um, skip and wave, right. But it's going to be, uh, uh, um, uh, Latin themed um, to the movie, and also you know this is something this park that park does really well is they mm. lean into Day of the Dead during Halloween. They lean into mm. you know uh, seasonal overlays that appeal to the local Latinx audience, and it's I think it's so brilliant. And it actually comes it's out, wonderful. It en- ends up being really wonderful. Yeah, like it's always great. The food stuff. Oh my god, there's a tamale cart in Paradise Garden Grill only at he Christmas time. Hit his mic. so excited. Oh, it's <laughs> like your mic excited. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but it's like my favorite thing in the park for like two months. 
Yeah. Dave loves I, to pay for overpriced tamales. It's his, it's mm-hmm. his number one thing. I am I am such a freaking tamale snob because I get them for Christmas every single year. And if they are not up to that snuff, I ain't bothering with it. Like, no offense, Knott's Berry Farm, but I was at Knott's the other day and my brother's like, ooh, tamales. I was like, don't, don't even, don't even try. <laughs> Have you really? had the California Adventure tamales? Because I think they're pretty good, all things considered. Uh, usually the issue. <laughs> they're the better issue than Knott's, I, though, right? <laughs> the issue the so here's the thing is that typically the issue that I end up having isn't the 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 insides like whatever the chicken beef pork whatever you're choosing in the sauce usually tastes fantastic yeah the issue that i tend to run into is masa texture yes if it's yes, not yes. the right texture it throws the entire thing off yeah you know overcooked undercooked too moist too dry you know there's this perfect <laughs> masa yeah like Right in between all of it, and that's a really hard thing to hit. It is so, and and I've yet to find a a theme park tamale that hits Gabe, that right. Gabe note. is the uh, little red riding hood. No, no, I'm sorry. Gabe is the three Goldilocks. bears uh, Goldilocks of just uh, right, uh, just right. Have you? Have, there's one in LA that I love called Tamales Alberto, and it's in I've heard uh, of that. ironically that in good. Filipino town, but it's been around since the 60s, and it's <laughs> it's incredible. no, it's very good. Yeah. That is is good stuff. Uh, so, uh, we, you know, we're going to move on from Disneyland and we're going to head on over to the East coast, uh, for some spooky business, uh, which it's, it's amazing. Cause this came out of course on the 31st for Halloween, Dave, we have got, uh, our first look at some amazing things. Can you tell us a little we, bit about these new Epic universe? Yeah. Amazing yeah. We, things? um, we 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 uh, you have all witnessed um, live footage of my boyfriend. Um, <laughs> Jason and I are bringing on a third. Um, he's very hairy. He's got very big teeth. Um, he looks real mean, but I know he gives really great hugs. Wait, and, that's um, just Ziggy. That's just your dog. Yeah, you're describing your dog. <laughs> I kind of am. Um, so no, Universal debuted. The Monsters Unchained, which is the the, the e ticket ride in um, Darkmoor, uh, which is the, the the small town where all the Dark Universe uh, monsters, classic Universal monsters, are going to be. They released some videos of these animatronics, and they are <laughs> so good. I mean, they're mind blowing. The, yeah, they're mind blowing. They're so fast, and and Frankie walks, and the wolf lunges out at you. Like what I realized by watching this, by the way, is. Uh, since uh, we know it's the kook arm, we know it's the same as as Potter. Mm-hmm. And I, I, way back when, I worked a little bit on this park, but I didn't work on any of the rides. But I had seen bits and pieces. And my question about this one has always been: if it's not going to be flight simulation dome screen stuff like they do in in Potter, because they're not doing any any simulation. They said there's no dome screens, no Thank screen God. carousels like they have on, on Forbidden Journey. My thought was, well, what? Yeah, and but then I realized why is that what that ride vehicle gives you, and t- and the Potter ride only touches on this once or twice is the ability to get very very close to things that move very fast and are scary, like the spiders and like the the, the dementors. So this the, the ride moments is literally going to be my about- eyes and can't yeah. open them at all. Right. Yeah, <laughs> this ride is literally going to be about pushing it as close to these freaking oh. monsters as you can. Yeah. Um, I've, I, the, the, so, so overall the response seems to be really popular and really positive. Yeah. I know a lot of people were not, there's some, there's a certain contingent that we're not crazy about the redesigns. And I'll just tell you guys, that's all likeness, like the Lugosi and, yeah. and, and Karloff yeah. estates do not allow it. And, uh, uh, for yeah. certain things and, and, or want too much money or, or a lot of the, a lot of it, they just don't want anymore. So, um, mm-hmm. they had to, and on, and on top of that, I think it's smart of them to sort of reclaim the character in a different way for the parks yeah. i'm not against it like a thousand Gilman and, percent G- G- gill man and the wolf man the wolf man by the way is my boyfriend that um of course uh, <laughs> the gill man he, is my boyfriend by the way he's Gilman. right he's i mean c- come on Frankie's my boy Look, oh, there he is. i love him so much that, what a that, hunk these things fuck can we just say yeah, that right yeah, now? Yeah, these characters yeah. fuck why does it why does it look like gill man is sitting down it's like that's he's launching. Swear, he's that's launching swear, himself. Like, after no, out of the water. Out. Launching. <laughs> I think. I think that there might be a moment where it, it feels like you're underwater, and this is mm-hmm. going to look like he's swimming towards you. That's yeah, my agreed. guess. The way he's, agreed. the Maybe. movement is. If you notice, like his, like there, it's just positioned right. And I kind of remember the 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 shot. It was sort of this. Um, it feels fluidy. So that's my 
That's my hope anyway. And the so, shot and the and the, the, the Wolfman lunge looks like he's right yeah. above you. And if you remember, yeah. like one of the most terrifying moves in Forbidden Journey is when um the the, the Whomping Willow tries to get you. You literally mm-hmm. feel like you're going head over ass over tea kettle, like going completely backwards. Yeah. Yeah. What's amazing is you're not. I've seen the, no. the tilt on the ride vehicle is actually only like this. It's like leaning back in a in a in a overstuffed chair. But for some reason, it feels like you're completely upside down. So that's, I bet you that moment is an on your back moment where he's lunging at you. Well, that would and the make weird, sense. The weird thing about the werewolf, too, is that, or I should say the wolf man, technically, is Excuse that uh, uh, we also know that there's a swipe kind of variant in the in his ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I wasn't, if they hadn't have said this is exclusively for this ride, oh, I would have assumed right. oh. this would have been that one. Interesting. But they did. They said this was all about that one. Uh, had ride. they said there will be an animatronic Wolfman, yeah. Wolfman on the roller yeah, coaster? Yeah, there's, there's an image. It. There's also an image of the concept art, but you can't trust the concept art, can we? No, <laughs> I, that feels like something that you have to assume uh, will occur. A couple things I will say. It, it's very clear to me Frankenstein is going to be our hero here in the sense clear. of helping us. Um, yeah. I have no issue with that. He is not a villain, technically. Uh, misunderstood. Misunderstood dude. He just wants friends. He just wants friends. Our bad boy. Let's give Let's give it up because, honestly, I'm getting more Chris Lee off of this Dracula than sure. I am. Yeah, me too. Uh, totally Bella Lugosi, get that. And I'm Which for I it. Which I love. Because I love, I love a, a red-eyed fangy Chris Lee uh, hammer. So this works for me a lot better actually than Bella Lugosi. That kind of vibe I think would have felt, I don't know. It would have felt enough. off with the tone of the ride cheesy. based on yeah. kind of like how everything is working. Yeah. It just would not have meshed well. Yeah. Do we do we know uh, who's responsible for these animatronics? Which uh, yes, Creature company? Technologies. They're the people I knew it. Oh my God. I knew oh, it. I didn't know that. Yeah. They're the guys that did, you know, the big Kong. They did the big um, dino that chases the vehicle in, in, in the Beijing. They did all, all the Jurassic World, World uh, yeah. projects, like the live show. They did the dragon. They yeah. did the dragons for the, 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 dragon the, the theater stuff, show, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. They're, they're Universal's like go to right now. And they are incredible. Yeah, they do great work. Yeah. They do great work. Yeah. You sure. know, the slash fiction I'm... for these animatronic figures is going to be off the chain. Like, oh, <laughs> big time. Are you kidding me? The, the, those I'm, horror, those horror nerds are freaks, and and <laughs> in the best possible yeah. way. And the the you tweets spell, I saw, you can't spell horror without horny. <laughs> you Almost. cannot half of it at yeah. least. I mean, they sexed up these characters can, for show. <laughs> I mean, I'm as a horror fan, as somebody that loves the classic Universal monsters. Just to kind of touch upon some, I don't forgot who said it, but you know, the kind of the redesign. I have no issue with the redesign. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, in particular, when it comes to this attraction, I don't particularly want a Lugosi or even a Christopher Lee in this attraction. Yeah. I need something that's going to fit it thematically and tonally, and those yeah. characters just don't. And if they need to be a little bit more badass for less of a for a for you know lack of a better term and Mm. and modern then so be it that's what we need and i'm excited for it i'm excited to see just the the actual fact that we're getting a universal monsters to land like that's absolutely bonkers and the thing is that some people are like oh well the universal monsters aren't that popular i'm like not true no you wait and see no you wait and see how popular they are yeah, that they're like the bedrock. Bar. They're the bedrock of of horror cinema. Like they, uh-huh. yeah, they are they're the it. foundation yeah. of it. And to miss to to kind of like second guess that, yeah, I think is a big mistake. I think it's going to be the second crowded, most crowded area of that park, in my opinion. I'm more second to Potter, about... just to be fair. Oh, I think Nintendo over Potter, but but really? but then oh, again, yeah, that, so comes, that comes from the coming East from Coast. A, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm coming from a perspective of like, oh, I have yeah. Super Nintendo at Hollywood, so. Yeah, yeah. You're actually, you're not you're not wrong there. Yeah, but we'll have DK. So uh, mm. that's what I'm excited about. I'm so mm. excited. Ugh. I'm so excited about that too. I, uh, yeah, I. This is all very exciting. Let's talk about more horror things that are very exciting over at Universal Studios. Are we just calling it Vegas? I know it's got an official name, but like this is Universal Horror, horror Unleashed. Unleashed. Horror yeah. Unleashed. Dave, what is yeah. going on? We finally know the houses for Horror Unleashed, and we have a little some concept. Yeah. So, so this is part of an expansion at um, Area 15 in Las Vegas, which is where uh, the Vegas Meow Wolf Omega Mart is. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the, Vegas has gone through m- multiple eras where they tried to do, you know, non-gambling entertainment. Yeah. Dave, haven't you went through this before? <laughs> I, yeah, I've been... I've, I've... <laughs> 
I worked on Star Trek. I worked on so Caesar's Merlin. Magical Empire. I uh, yeah, I worked on a ton. I worked on Eminem stuff there. There was an Eminem's attraction that I worked on there. Um, oh, I thought you meant the so rapper you, for like, like two yeah, seconds. Yeah, Marshall right? Mathers. Marshall Mathers. <laughs> 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 um, uh, no, it was a. It was the, a it you was know what they the served em- in their cafeteria? What's Mom's that? spaghetti. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> It was uh, it's called the M M's Academy, and it's where the M's go to earn their letter. It's like a like a university. It was really cute. Oh. Mm, okay. um, anyway, um, yeah. So Vegas has gone through these 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 you know cycles, and the last I would say couple of decades has been the mega resorts uh, aiming for people who wanted to splurge and spend money. But what they found is there's this other market, which is um, you know t- uh, early twenties to mid thirties friend groups. Who who aren't big spenders? Who go and get a hotel room and crowd like six people into it, and and want to get the cheapest drinks and and they play a little bit. They do a little bit of gambling, but it's mostly about drinking and doing some fun stuff as a group. And this thing is primed and ready for that. And I've heard people say, you know, Vegas has had a couple of haunted attractions before. Like, didn't Eli Roth have something there? Yeah, Eli Roth's Goratorium. Yeah, I didn't go, so I can't talk to w- whether it was quality or not. Did you, Gabe? It, I didn't get to go through it. I watched a lot of POVs and spoke to a lot of people who went through it. I think yeah. the issue wasn't necessarily the quality of the sets or the props as yeah. much as it was it being staffed fully to the brim as much as it should have been. Oh, uh, okay. All right. And and I know there was a saw thing there for a while. Anyway, regardless, Universal obviously would not do this if they didn't see a market and i think there's a huge market for this Mm -hmm. um and so it is a year-round uh quartet of haunted houses with a bar and some uh um uh, just the bar if you want to see splice through it yeah and so this looks like it's themed to jack the clown uh and it's got some circus uh some grotesquery circus elements to it um so you know drinking and halloween it's just like halloween horror nights um and uh, they have announced four houses that it will be opening with. Um, Universal Monsters, which is awesome. And I am, I'm assuming it's going to be a li- like the ones that they've done at Halloween Horror Nights in the last mm-hmm. couple of years, which have been really great. Also reinvented versions of the characters. And um, this year's in particular was like this all-girl cast of... The, Van Helsing was a woman, and, and, and it was all the, the, the lady monsters, and it was just great. Um so it's probably going to be one of those or an amalgam of those. Um, the second is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I think is a really interesting choice. It's funny that uh, I didn't think going into Halloween Horror Nights on the West Coast this year, I didn't really think much of, te- of Texas Chainsaw. I've seen it before in a maze. It's like, it's an older brand. It'll be fine. It was my favorite one of the whole event, actually. It was, I, I thought it was, it was just really good. perfectly done and actually scary and had some really good scares. And the environments were great and it was really gross. And so that's a it's a really good choice. That's like a solid choice. Um, the next one's kind of a, a, one of the brands that came out of Florida, if I'm not uh, if I'm not mistaken, Gabe. Uh, Scarecrow the Reaping was one. Yeah, of the... that was uh, HHN twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so You're like, listeners, yeah, yeah you... sure. I don't know. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> I was going to say, listeners, if you don't know, <laughs> Gabe is our is our is our haunt whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> and has an encyclopedic knowledge of this stuff. So, um, uh, and then the fourth one is Blumhouse's The Exorcist Believer, which is an interesting choice because oh. the movie did okay. It was bad. But... <laughs> oh, it was real bad. Yeah, the movie was not great. And 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 it, the scariest the... thing is they're just showing the movie. Like that's all they're doing. <laughs> yeah, they strap the, the, you down. They had the maze in in, in uh, L.A. last year, and it was. Fine. I actually thought That's the classic fine. Exorcist maids they did like five or six years ago was hmm. amazing. Because they have an Anne Dowd scare actor in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anne Dowd. She's an uh, Exorcist believer. And also yeah. in oh. Hereditary and The Land oh, right. yeah. and Maid's Tale. I'm very yeah. curious. I don't, I, don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. Just, just playing Anne Dowd. Just playing yeah. the actress. Yeah. Not, just playing herself. Not, uh, she's the I, she's I, in I the would pre-show. go if they had an Anne Dowd uh, scare actor in there. So this is uh, that's um, a, I, uh, Bri, you win gayest thing said so far in this podcast. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I know. I mean, this. I mean, tonight this episode is a real sausage fest, though. Come on, like, it really it is. is. Yeah, it is. Total it is. We miss. I should have mentioned at the forefront. Uh, oh. Victoria wasn't able to to join us, and and Sarah was feeling ill. So we wish them both the best. Uh, and you know, we we we. Uh, Cheers to our rats, Bri, How are we on late uh, on labor? How are things labor going watch, over there? Twenty twenty four. No news. No, no news. news. No news is uh, <laughs> usually good news. 
Um, yeah. Not when you're so, in labor, bro. Yeah, but not when you're in labor. <laughs> not yeah. when you're in That's labor. Valid. I'll tell you that valid. much. Good point. Literally, Good point. when Nikki was in labor, she's like, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, just kill me. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, uh, it was that like a season next, of The Exorcist. That opens in Vegas next year. People can sign up for updates at universalhorrorunleashed.com, uh, which has all the information and descriptions and concept art. And I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a home run. And, uh, of course, it sounds like they're making it so this, those four choices will rotate or they'll add more. Oh, sure. I'm sure there's more room in there than four. Yeah. I'm sure there's expansion space. Yeah. So, I'm really, um, curious, Dave... really curious if they are going to you know if they end up building more or rotating them out are they going to add one before closing one to rotate it so it doesn't feel like you're mm. paying a ticket to have less you know what mm. i mean probably i bet yeah. you that's what the flex space is yeah because um and the other thing is they're just going to be shipped for the most part i i bet in the early days at least they're going to be shipping this stuff from la they're going to use the existing, a thousand percent existing thousand assets percent. so they keep yeah. a lot of these assets anyway they have a huge storage facility and and universal keeps everything yeah. after every year well not and, everything and... i've been to the lakeland antique mall but yeah most of it. <laughs> <laughs> the west coast is maybe right. different i don't know yeah, yeah. but the west coast uh, I, i'm sure they're everything. gonna put some money into it and plus them up and make them a, a, you know a, a little bit more than what they do in the parks because they've got to last longer um, yeah. and they got permanent, a more permanent durable. houses. Yeah, permanent. Yeah. But it, from a design perspective, I think a lot of it will be it'll be handled, you know. So we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I think they'll always have four no matter what. That's kind of what, what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. Dave, do you see, I mean, from your perspective as someone who's who's done the Vegas thing uh, for, for themed entertainment, it, it feels like possibly the 90s surge was family oriented and this yes. is more bachelor bachelorette party oriented or 20 30 something friend groups it's bachelors and bachelorettes yeah. I... it's just graduated got just got my phd mm. going with my homies right it's like celebratory yeah. 20s and 30s we're broke but not super broke right we're not yeah. super mm. broke we can't go somewhere expensive but we want to go somewhere super fun with lots of choices where we can get hammered that's vegas yeah. has turned into that really also yeah. so, epcot vegas is epcot now <laughs> reflecting on my experience working in new york as a concierge for many years i also see so much of the interest in sleep no more and that particular experience kind of yeah. being integrated into 100%. this experience and that market yeah. kind of going into that in a more directed acutely horror oriented way yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's really interesting to me actually yeah the yeah. the one thing that I do want to say is like Dave, you're talking about like why Texas Chainsaw because it was it's kind of an older brand. I feel like out of any of those, you from hearing the name the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you kind of know what you're getting, even right. though you don't know the IP or the brand. So I feel like that's the easiest thing. And the same thing kind of goes for Universal Monsters. Okay, I know what that is. Or The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. I definitely know what that is. You know, Scarecrow yeah. the Reaping is like the one outlier in all of those that nobody really knows what that is because it's an it's an uh, original IP from Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights. Do we know so, if, if – are you buying all four or do you buy individual? Do we know that I yet? Think I do not know. It doesn't say, but I would bet it's a, it's a t one ticket for everything. That would be my guess. That would be so, my guess, yeah. I, I know you were talking about kind of like this new kind of cycle that Vegas kind of goes through. And, you know, Universal probably doing their, their research when it comes to this sort of stuff because they wouldn't be building it and spending their money on this if it didn't have money to be made. Uh, a big question mark for me is just the fact that I feel like this type of horror, especially when it comes to, you know, very intimate ha haunted house style experiences, is a very niche, unique mm -hmm. thing. Because even when it comes to the theme park experiences, you know, that's really tailored to a certain group of people. And then mm -hmm. realistically, how many of those people are going to be in Vegas and say, I want to do well, that outside of I other think it's outside of the theme park group entirely. Yeah, I think it's the ones that go to the local haunts. And they're like, let's go to the fancy. Now we're going to go to Vegas. Think... This is going to be the coolest haunt we've ever seen. It's kind of like when Universal did the escape rooms, right? It's like mm -hmm. I, you can go to like a local escape room, but it's not the Universal escape room. And you pay a premium, but you also kind of get yeah. a premium experience. So I, my guess is that's what they're they're betting I, on. And I also, it's like, also... it's irresistible to hordes of drunk people friend groups would yeah. you know oh, that's like exactly it's, right. it's, those scare actors i feel bad for those scare actors that's it like well, get, it's it come on, absolutely they get drunk at the parks too yeah yeah, yeah. it's True, it's absolutely designed for that demographic and, and there's yeah. no end in sight of that yeah. particular demographic we can also see now that the escape rooms were not a success for universal because they would have added that to this if if it was yeah. they've already made it, them yeah um if if they if back to the future or jurassic world had been you know 
really yeah. making they're too money. Ex- they they're too expensive. Too expensive. And they are, they're, and they are they're too intricate. escape room light. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, ha- yeah. having experienced them, I, I was yeah. just disappointed. And same, and I thought it was product. good, yeah. and I, I, I get what they're getting at in terms of design because it's an escape room where the puzzle solutions can be different every time you go in. There's a digital yeah. mm-hmm. overlay to everything, and and to me that's clever, but it doesn't justify the the price. You know, and, and no, it was I a thought it was a good experience, Back to the Future but I've was... done better. Back to the Future was really well themed. I loved, yep. I loved my experience. I wouldn't say that it was. A great escape room. I guess that's yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah, um, and I think that I think that yeah. I think the other friend, the, the other sort of friend group dynamic here is that mm-hmm. <clears throat> when that friend group is figuring out what they want to do, <clears throat> they're going to be like, "Oh, well, all, they can all agree on Meow Wolf, but this is the one yeah. thing where it's like four of the six want to do this, the other two are scary <laughs> yeah. cats, and the four push them <laughs> into a maze. Like that's who this is for. Yeah. That's literally yeah. who this is for. Totally, exactly. I am very yeah. curious to see how well it does. I'm very, very interested. Yeah. Well, we know me you're too. very interested, Gabe, because you are from Dave's. From what Dave's told me the California horror haunt uh, connoisseur. Um, so we brought you on. Uh, of course, I literally to talk. posted a story today, and I posted a picture of Ghost Town from Not Scary Farm. And I said, "I miss haunt." And just like a little <laughs> sad, I just like a little sad, crying person in the corner, crying. Like that's what I posted today. For like, a completely I, different I, reason than everybody else today. It's okay, um, big, it's yeah. okay, big guy. Halloween will come back. It's okay. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming back. Uh, but uh, tell us, you know, you you've you've did the local haunts, and we've, we we t- we we talk a lot on on the show about sort of the East Coast haunts because we we have people on here that go to them and things of that nature. But yeah. uh, you know, kind of give us a give us a little tour of uh, the West Coast and what you enjoyed this year uh, when it came to hauntings. So, I mean, we usually try to hit as many as we can out here on the West Coast. There's plenty to kind of choose from in terms of the kind of more larger mainstays of SoCal in the Halloween community. You have your Not Scary Farm. You have your Universal Studios Hollywood's Halloween Horror Nights. You have Fright Fest Extreme at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, The Spirits Rise, which they came back finally for this season. Then you have more of some of the independent haunts like Reign of Terror and Thousand Oaks. That's about maybe 20 minutes away. Away from me, which is one of the like largest haunted houses. I think it's like 60, 70 rooms or something insane. Like it's it's huge. And then you have home haunts galore to the point where you have a whole website called the SoCal Haunt List that is dedicated yep. to showing you where every single haunted house is located, every single yard display, every single home haunt, every single little interactive yard display, and you could go to each one of them. So there are so many different variables when it comes to the Halloween experience out here. And, you know, even if you don't like getting scared, there are things to do, like Boney Island or something. You know, there are, you know, family-friendly experiences out here in Southern California as well, just... There's there's a myriad of choices. That's so. Uh, did you did you have name your top three this year? What was what what really hit hit you? That's 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 like choosing b- between children. <laughs> this is difficult. So you only have one kid. Not about you. You have one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I choose the dog. It's yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> the dog doesn't bug me every single day, asking me like, "Papa, can I have another snack? Can I have another yeah. snack? <laughs> well, can I have another snack? Can uh, we go to Disneyland? Can I have another snack? No." I, I'm um, sure the dog does bug you for snacks. I'm going to guess, but he's sleeping right now. <laughs> oh, good boy. <laughs> um, so here, here's what I'll say is that not scary farm is the event that I fell in love with. Halloween haunt was the kind of the Genesis for everything that you're looking at right now. Like <laughs> I, I absolutely fell in love with the Halloween season because of that uh, event. So I have a not scary farm K tattooed on my calf. Hey, so, there you go. You know, I I am a dedicated fan of that event, so it's really hard to kind of choose anything else past that. I love every event for different reasons. You know, each one brings a different flavor, and I I, I hate getting into that conversation of, like, which one's better this year, Six Flags or Horror Nights or or Scary Farm? Like, It's all subjective. It's all subjective. Like, Mm -hmm. I could think that one's better than the other, and then somebody else could be, you know, in the the other corner. So... Here's what I'll say. I'll give you some highlights from the season because it's really hard to choose other than the Not Scary Farm. So for me, Not Scary Farm, the two new mazes, Widows and Eight Fingers Nine, the Boogeyman. Those are both new mazes for this year, 2024, and both were absolutely freaking spectacular for different reasons. Now, one of them was a spider uh, haunted house in a convalescent home 
which <laughs> is, is it is a very weird description, um, but it gets under your skin. The sound design was phenomenal. A lot of those like kind of high pitched kind of squealy, yeah, widows, oh, uh, high pitched squealy noises. One. You know, it reminds me a lot of what John Williams does with the bugs in Temple of Doom and things like that, or anything <laughs> you know re- regarding creepy crawlies. Um, really got under your skin and kind of takes a few different turns to this realm of spiders and deities that you're not really expecting and then with eight fingers nine it is a fairy tale it's a fairy tale about a boogeyman about this child who was bullied and left in the woods to die and a fairy basically brought him back to life as this monster to kill people as revenge and what he does is that he eats their fingers in their sleep as they're paralyzed so that's why it's eight fingers nine because he's counting eight eight six fingers seven fingers eight fingers nine that's that's where that finger uh, it's not a sexual connotation it, it, it literally him counting <laughs> your fingers as he eats them um by the way i think it's really funny that the same designer designed a maze that it replaced called dark entities and everybody called it dark and titties so i just want i just want to point that out it makes me laugh it makes me laugh he went from dark, dark and titties to eight fingers nine uh which is fantastic uh and that maze also goes into a very crazy realm as well and it only that got better weird. during the season because a lot of these things got really tailored uh and you know the sound design got nailed down and really helped deliver a full-fledged story which is what i like when it comes to these experiences halloween horror nights here in hollywood fantastic this year i unfortunately thought that our version of universal monsters was not as good as it should have been i think mm. i had some really bad run-throughs unfortunately mm. but when mm. it comes to the ones that i really really enjoyed i absolutely loved insidious insidious was really fantastic this year really good really intense really scary so what was the other one there was one more that was on the back oh the weekend the weekend was weekend was great yeah it was so good it was so good and it's funny because when you think of the weekend you don't particularly think of anything overtly horror so when you go in you don't really know what to expect other than hey i like this music this music is fun and then it just smacks you upside the head with so much gory imagery yeah. and weird monsters and like really brutal his, scenarios and it's fun. His videos have a lot of weird like dif- disfiguration and surgery and, and there's a lot of weird yeah. things. In them. So he's one of those ones that the horror sneaks up on you with his brand and mm. I am constantly surprised by how good those mazes are. That one and Texas Chainsaw are my two favorite of Universal with Insidious being third. Texas Chainsaw was definitely a surprise hit for me. I wasn't expecting to like it that much. Me too. Because me usually too. Texas Chainsaw, it's pretty on the nose. Like, you get yeah. it. Like, I know what I'm going to get. There's probably going to be a face peel. There's going to yeah. be somebody getting a chainsaw pushed into them. Okay, I get what you yeah. mean. But every set, I felt like, kind of pushed the intensity further and further and further. And there were a lot of really fun sets that I've not seen them do before. One of my favorite ones was kind of the set them up and knock them down where you have Leatherface on one side and you have Chop Top on the other. And they're raised. So they're looming over you one with like a bat and the other one with this chainsaw and i thought it was fantastic just a bunch of fun yeah. then moving on to fright fest extreme which this year the extreme just meant ips because <laughs> they <laughs> they added that uh which i mean it is true that's essentially what it is because it is fright fest at its heart but with a whole bunch of new ips added in T- uh, trick or treat was uh, so freaking good was i it? loved it i so love that much. movie I liked it a lot. Now, the thing is, is that I, I could already hear people saying, no, Gabe, it wasn't that good. The The sets weren't great. All these things. I'm judging a lot of these things based on the merit of their own parks. If I'm trying mm. to compare a Fright Fest to a Horror Nights, you're going to be disappointed every single yeah. day. Yeah, it makes yeah. no sense to do that. So yeah. I judge the mazes based on the park's previous mazes. Yeah. And Trick or Treat was a major step up and in the right direction for Fright Fest, in my opinion, or at least Six Flags Magic Mountain. You know, there's a lot of good that have that has come out of the experimentation, which, you know, that's what I'll say about Fright Fest, is that they experiment and they do some weird, crazy shit <laughs> that, like, you won't expect. And I love that about them. Plus, they're, you know, their uh, makeup team, the Scott Ramp and the Scream team is just absolutely second to none. Like, it's so freaking good. I go to Fright Fest for the talent and the scare zones. They are so good. Yep. You're, you're going to get really tailored experiences. So, like, the thing is, like, when it comes to Halloween events, you think, okay, Haunted House scare, scare zone scare. At Fright Fest, I feel like, and Scary Farm to a certain extent, but Fright Fest Extreme really lays it on thick with allowing their monsters to have character. 
hmm. and B characters and deliver tailored kind of interactions that aren't necessarily all the time about scaring you as much as it is either making fun of you, making you laugh, having just a nice back and forth sometimes, you know? There's a scare zone at the top of the hill near Tatsu called Nightmares, and there's a character there called Lorraine Lorraine, and she is a witch, and this is all like black light makeup style scare zone, and everybody's a fairy tale kind of character, so there's like a Pinocchio, a big bad wolf, there's a queen on stilts, all this stuff, and Lorraine Lorraine, every single year, has a new business venture, mm. and it's like, the thing to do is to go talk to Lorraine Lorraine and find out what her new business venture is, <laughs> so the first one was Chunky Pumpkin Lattes, and the, the chunky part was uh, curdled milk at the bottom of it, and you had to drink it with a boba straw, that's how what she would always talk about, <laughs> and then she talked about pedicures, because she's carrying a severed foot inside of like a shoe, and things like that, so every single year it's about what new product she's trying to sell or the clowns in city under siege which is in the dc universe area you know they're absurd and up to no good and this year they also have a brand new scare zone which is actually probably one of my favorite scare zones of the season which was the underworlds of oz so it was all wizard of oz themed and it was the mm. books so not the movies sure so mm. you get do we get rollers you get wheelers they are oh, wheeler yeah. scare actors yeah which yeah. <laughs> which when they announced it, yes. i was like how are you going to do that? So basically what they did was, you know how you, you've ever seen the stilt walkers that have like stilts on their yeah. legs and their hands? So the they have like a shorter version of that have, that have wheels on them, but they're also wearing wheelies. Light up wheelies and they're rolling down the hill towards oh. like Twisted Colossus. That's like and Return it works to so Oz well. style. Though. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. Uh, they have a whole bunch of flying monkeys, which are the sliders in that area. You have your queen that swaps heads. So there's a whole section where you see all of her different heads. She likes to Mombi. swap out. Yeah, Mombi. And then you also have a witch on stilts. Throughout the season, they did change some stuff and actors from different scare zones came over. So one night they had. The Cowardly Lion, Tin Man, and Dorothy there all in one night. And Mark Wing, who is the creative director over there, actually goes out usually every season at least one or two nights dressed as a character, whatever it ends up being. And this year he was the Wicked Witch of the West. Mm. And he carried a broom staff. And on the broom staff was like a piece of Dorothy's hair wrapped up in her blue blue dress <laughs> like he killed her and then oh. like fur on his arm that he's like and i got her a little dog too and he killed toto it was fantastic <laughs> absolutely loved every second of it <laughs> it was so good and what's funny is that that night i was with my daughter so my daughter has a love for haunt season now because of me and she loves fright fest she loves meeting the characters and all the characters are scary yet fun with her you know they give her good experiences they give how, her small how old frights. is she now she is six she turned six in october <sighs> And uh, if you look at our social media, you can find a whole bunch of pictures that I posted of me gushing and crying and all the nonsense about her being oh. amazing at these haunts. Um, every character usually like likes to talk with her, give her small frights. Freaking gr Wicked Witch of the West comes out of nowhere, just cackling up in her face, and she's like, huh, huh. <laughs> it, was, it was great. I loved it. I was laughing because uh, I got to see her a little scared, which was fun. But uh, <laughs> that's the hope. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? Yeah. The pictures you showed scared. me of her, the pictures you've always showed me of her meeting like Frank and Bride of Frankenstein at Universal just during the day <sighs> are the cutest freaking photos. They're so cute because she just loves these characters. It's amazing. She, and what's, what's f phenomenal and something that we're very lucky to have because, you know, we're in the theme park community is. We've gone to these parks and have pictures of her as a baby, baby, baby with these characters. <laughs> and we have pictures of her growing up next to these characters because yeah. Universal Studios Hollywood has always been in our backyard. So yeah. we have one of her reaching her little finger out to Frankenstein's monster and he's Oop. doing the same thing back as her with like a little chunk. And then now we have a picture of her. She had drew, she drew a picture for them. And they were taking a picture together, holding up the picture she drew for them. Aww. So you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to foster a love for these characters because I love yeah. them so much. Yeah. And for her, I kind of just did it by like, he's not scary, he's just sad, and mm. nobody wants to be his friend, and he just desperately wants a friend. Aww. And Empathy. that kind of struck a chord with her. <laughs> and now she's like, I want to be his friend, um, which, you know, that was kind of the you, whole thing. She when doesn't I, know what happened to the last girl that tried to be his friend, right? <laughs> she's going to get thrown into <laughs> so, a lake. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So when when he when she gave him the picture, he went to the flower bush in the in like the Universal Plaza and picked the flower and gave it to her. And I just looked at her and like, thank God there's no water. around. <laughs> and she, she goes, she goes, what? And I'm like. 
You're good. You'll see when and you're then, older. Yeah. Like, Bride, yeah. Bride of Frankenstein was like, because uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she can't talk, uh, which was fantastic. But uh, yeah, so I mean, like with with our daughter, she she is kind of growing to love these kinds of events, and I'm kind of straying off course here. I'll get right back to no, what we're good. talking about. But with regards to her, you know, the the entire time, kind of growing up in our family, she realized when I said Papa's going to go see his monster friends because that was the easiest way to kind of explain it, was that Papa was going to a haunt. That's what it meant. And I will try my best not to cry saying this, (laughs) but we were at Fright Fest Extreme, and we were walking out of City Under Siege, and... You know, I was like, are you having fun? She goes, yes, I'm having fun. And then it was like a little pause and she looked up at me and she goes, Papa, your monster friends are now my monster friends. <laughs> and I oh. died on the inside. <laughs> I sobbed so hard when I got home. Oh. Like it just really knocked me off my feet. Oh, and I was so like, pure. She's so You're pure. right, kid. They are your friends. Because yeah. oh. honestly, the last time I went without her, the, every monster was like, Where's your kid? And they were more interested <laughs> about her than they were the me. So I had to bring her again, you know, and all of them freaked out and were very excited to see her. So, but, you know, um, how we, we used to have those old uh, picture frames where you'd have all your, your school pictures and mm-hmm. sort of a, you just have that with Frankenstein now. For, you know, <laughs> That's a great yeah, idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just do like a little photo book or something with all the pictures yeah, of Frankenstein. That'd be go. great. Um, and then moving off of uh, Fright Fest Extreme, Dark Harbor came back this year after a very Ooh. long hiatus after closing in 2020. And I would like to say that it came back better than ever. I think they nailed the tone and the feeling of the original Dark Harbor. And to kind of give you guys a little bit of an explanation, because I think Dave knows because he's yeah. here in SoCal a lot. Um, Dark Harbor had a very large following and it, it's and it wasn't one of those large scale events like a not scare from Halloween Horror Nights or a Fright Fest. You know, it's located the Queen Mary. There's very limited space there, you know, out in the main thoroughfare as well as on the ship. But it garnered this huge cult following for its yeah. approach to how they wanted to feature their characters. Because for all intents and purposes, those characters are based off of real spirits that haunt the ship. So I think a lot of people gravitated towards that. And on top of it, it kind of felt like this giant circus party. Yeah, and I think a fun. lot of people liked that. I think near the end of its run towards 2020, it started veering too far into the, we have 75 bars and three haunted houses. And mm. it's like, I don't think that's the way to go. But they they didn't overcorrect. They corrected the ship, so to speak, and <laughs> and actually uh, delivered an event that was the right amount of ours and some really good haunted houses. And Infirmary as well as uh, Lullaby were phenomenal and gave me some major scares because I'm really hard to scare. And, I'm and, really hard to scare. And there's been a couple of uses of spaces in that ship on those events that are the most terrifying haunts I've ever been in because it's just Agreed. by nature, it's just a place that mm. your, your entire being is like, I should not be in here regardless yeah. of whether yeah. it's haunted. It's like, it's metal and it's weird shapes and it's echoey and it's like mm-hmm. the old feeling and you know, it's just, and it's authentic. There's an authenticity there. And I also think Gabe, I also really always, always admired the talent at that haunt. I thought they were some Agreed. of the best characters I've ever seen anywhere. We're always the energy level. level is off the charts. It's at crazy. Queen yeah, really, really, really good. And just kind of echo what Dave said, you know, I think there is something to be said when a haunt decides to not put anything in their maze because the environment speaks for itself. Mm. And when you're in the belly of that ship, oh. you're in the belly of that freaking ship. And the, you could tell one of the and best that's scary. One of the best ones they ever did. And this I think it was Inferno. It was like probably eight years ago. The finale of it, you walked on a real catwalk, like an actual catwalk that went over the boiler room. And so mm. it's a it's a 60 foot fall off of this catwalk. It's, it's high. And it's the room nuts. Is huge. And, and what they had done to make it safe for an audience is they had put netting that you couldn't see on either side. So you couldn't crawl over, you couldn't fall out. But it was diaphanous if at best, right? What they also built was on top of the catwalk, they built a subfloor that had an air bladder and a drop on it. And so you were halfway across of this, looking at flames licking up on the sides of you in this giant, giant space, and the floor would just go and drop from underneath you. People lost their minds. Yeah, I peed a little. I'm sure I peed a little. (laughs) (laughs) It was so good. I remember that maze. And they, they brought it back this year for one of them. I don't remember which one it was in particular, but it was one of the three on the ship. 
but that boiler room and also the the swimming pool room is always creepy because it's empty. Yeah. Oh God, yeah, super it's, weird. Watch super the, creepy. Watch the walk the the run through the POVs for that event over the years because it's it's one of those under the radar ones that not everybody hears about and everybody goes to and it's one of my favorites. The ones on the ship are are not to be missed. They yep. are some of the best haunted experiences you'll have here in SoCal, simply based on the fact that it's on a real ship and yeah. it's really old and it's really creepy. And you know there are times where the mazes didn't have any sound design because all you hear is the water kind of hitting the outside of the ship very lightly because it's in that little harbor, and that is just so unnerving. The rhythmic nature of the water hitting the ship and just so it's quiet. Nuts. It's yeah. super weird and creepy. Um, yeah, so th- those are kind of the main ones. Uh, I did work a home hunt this year. I worked a Helizondo home hunt, which was a bunch of fun. Got a little bit of a pe- uh, peek on the other side of the curtain and scaring the heck out of people, which I wrecked some people. But I also made some people <laughs> laugh, which made me very happy. Awesome. So Well, thanks so much, Gabe. We appreciate the rundown. Uh, certainly, uh, you are our, our West Coast reporter when it comes to the haunts. Uh, yeah. And we love it. We love it. We love it. Um, this is this has very much become sort of a uh, – this is like a hollow mess episode. It's like a, we're doing Christmas news and, and Halloween reviews and – Not going to lie. It's – it's kind of like what Halloween is, is about halfway through the run, because if you're at any Halloween event that also does Christmas yeah. later on, <laughs> you'll start seeing Christmas stuff pop up in the middle of the Halloween event. You're like, what the, f- what's yeah. happening? And, and like, there's a block of, the ice in the co- block of ice in the corner of the room with Mar- Mariah Carey inside of it thawing out very slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like so. you'll see Christmas wreaths uh, up, like on the last night of Fright Fest, I saw Christmas, Christmas wreaths up. <laughs> you know, in Ghost Town, there were the lanterns for Snow and Glow. At Universal Studios, you saw all the lights going up ar- along all the buildings during yeah. Horror Night. So this is an accurate representation of Happy exactly Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Um, Halloween never gets its Christmas chance. No, it's always it's always invaded. <laughs> Chris Maween. No, Christ I Ween. I don't know no. about Christ, Christ Ween. Ween. Yeah, Christ I don't Ween. know about Christ Ween. No, let's just Christ. Ween. Hollow Christ. <laughs> Hollow Christ. Uh, Christ Ween works for me. Um, Christ Ween does work. Yes. Christ Ween. Um, speaking of scary, uh, Dave, we're going to move on to a little bit of Walt Disney World Company news. Yeah. Uh, as yeah. they attempt to not scare us. Uh, what are they up to? Oh, yes. So, uh, you know, AI is all over the news. The genie's out of the bottle. It's a thing we have to deal with. And so how the uh, content creation companies and creative companies are dealing with it is something that people are watching very closely. Um, and Disney announced a, a, an announcement that's kind of a non-announcement. I think it's an announcement that is a cover your ass so they don't get bad press announcement, is that <clears throat> they said they're creating a team to oversee the company adoption of AI and mixed reality in a, which is weird that they bundled those two things together because they're not really the same and they're, they're not, not technologies the that depend on each other. So to no. me, it's also another softening of the blow is that they're uh, oversee uh, they're going to a team to oversee the company adoption of AI and mixed reality in responsible way across the country. So they're basically saying we're going to create a set of values for the company that uh, of how we're going to use this technology it, it, um, and i assume what they mean by responsible is not scraping other artists work in training models that aren't pay- yeah. paying them um which i would hope um you know and and we've seen at some before. point someone's going to get sued and, Dis- and disney doesn't want to be the first exactly so. oh right. it's going to happen it's going to happen and and you know adobe made a big big deal about how their ai built into photoshop and illustrator and all that stuff lately uses uh, is only trained on models of art from their licensable collection which sounds great meaning those people get paid just like when something gets used for licensing and guess what it's not they, they um. don't I, and it never really i don't know if they lied or they didn't know but the models were trained on tons of stuff they didn't pay for so th- that's mm. the core of the problem until they figure out how uh, you know that these things, how these models are trained on other people's work, how those people are going to get paid or licensed or however. And so, if Disney were to say we're going to train a Disney-specific AI on all of our product and every piece of art we've put out and every animation cell yeah. and everything like that, that's different because then that's like okay, it's our own stuff, and we're using AI mm-hmm. to reinterpret it and remix it. Do I like that idea? No, but at least it is. You know that would be a case where they're trying to do something within the realm of 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 um, 
morality and fair use, responsible use of, of art. Yeah. So, you know, they, they said uh, our uh, the quote was, our ability to maintain at the forefront of technolo- technological advances will only be more critical as we move forward, making it all the more important to understand and embrace new technological shifts in ways that enable our people, creativity, and business. The pace and scope of advances in AI and XR are profound and will continue to impact the consumer experiences, creative endeavors, and make our business for years to come, making it critical that Disney explore the exciting opportunities and navigate the potential risks. So I, I I think this is like you said, Nathan. This is them sort of saying, "Don't sue us. We're we're, we're not going to use your art if we can help it, and we're going to mm-hmm. come up with a, 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 a guardrails for the company of how to use it." I mean, I'd rather them do it than not do it. So yeah, it's going right. to. I I think I think you're a thousand percent right, and it's mainly because this is not going anywhere. No. AI is happening. No. The use of AI in the creative space is going to happen. <clears throat> and I think it's smart of them to try to get ahead of the curve, especially for their own content. You know, it's just a matter of time before everybody's doing it. And right. I think it's one of those things where like it, the monster is loose and yeah. it's it's going to happen whether we like it or not. Well, guess who right. doesn't want their their, their work? To be used right. inside of AI, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right, right. Exactly. I mean, I, I, from a from a creative space, you know, I'm a video editor. This is mm-hmm. that's what I do, and yeah. I've already been working on jobs where they're including AI into the work process yeah. in creating things. And there's right. really not much I could do about it, whether or not I agree or disagree with the inclusion yeah. of AI right. into our workforce. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, you know, and, it's terrible. It's, it could be scary at times. I mm-hmm. have artists and animator friends who are dabbling in it and trying to understand it to embrace it rather than a knee jerk yeah i'm never going to use it which i think is healthy to look at like i i will say that um my personal opinion is i don't ever want to have artwork or writing created in ai that is facing someone paying money for it but i will say i have used ai as in in the same way that i would use research images for a mood board because those are all mm-hmm. stolen images anyway that are not going to be put in front of a consumer and, and paid yeah. for. They're, sure. they're, they're inspiration for our artists to have ideas from. And so I've already used it for that. And that's exactly the same way mood board works. So for me, I'm finding my niche of, of how to use it. I've used chat GPT sometimes for like, help me solve this story problem. This is the result I want. Here are the characters I have. And it'll give me options of like, yeah, yeah, where I'm not having it write the script. I'm not having it write the story. Right. I'm saying I'm get, having trouble getting past this one thing. Give me some mm. examples of, of character resolution or dra- dramatic intrigue or whatever. Like yeah. give me a, a, a prompt, you know, there's this new, <clears throat> there's this new Apple ad where this guy like writes a really like sup bro email and then like hits the turn it professional button because it's a work yeah. email. And I find that yeah. lazy. I find that shit really, real lazy and like yeah. I, that's dumb but I, I will say like uh my wife uh who has adhd finds it so helpful to be able to utilize uh chat gpt to help her write some emails because it's hard for her to sort of lay things out in the way that she wants to lay them out sometimes and yeah. i think from a from a yeah. from, from that sort of perspective i'm like i get it right you know it's different than than everyone all of a sudden sounding the same because we're all using the same writing tool. Um, yeah. Right. I it's going to feed on itself and it's all going to get yeah. stale. <laughs> well, and I use Grammarly for the spelling, not the AI stuff because Grammarly right. is better at giving me suggestions than Apple is and Apple will get better at it. And I think that's fine. Um, yeah. I, you know, I would say that there's that, yeah, there's like that underlining Apple's been smart by sort of saying, Hey, what we're doing is going to be sort of, it's on your phone and 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 it's you know we're trying to sort of like make you not realize you're using ai it's just helping your your process and right. i think that's fine you're right i think i see this in in the kind of ai artwork already that gobbledygook sort of look uh everything yeah. looks like that wonka experience uh it's all stuff very now. uh it's, it's all kind of like one tone very smooth Loose, looking melty. yeah you know hands mm-hmm. are not quite right yeah <laughs> and i know of, it's like kind of realm it's generation what two or three, uh, probably like five, and I don't even know it because I'm ignorant. But yeah, I mean, I just don't think I think you know it's fine. I'll give I, you. I'll, I'll give you a, yeah. an interesting example. I saw it today on on LinkedIn. Mm. A friend of mine who's an animator, and he's been he's worked in CG animation for a very long time, and he's been doing experience with it. And one of the things he did is he took a, a set of the old Mego Star Trek figures, the, the, the action figures, and the bridge set that was the toy. 
and he took pictures of them from every angle and he gave them a prompt to animate it and it came up with this movie of these animated toys it looked like stop motion and i'm like okay yeah uh that's I the don't... kind of stuff that's scary, though. Yeah, I know. Like, that's, I know that it is. is to me, is, like, it is the scariest part of all of it. I mean, but... I could give less of two craps than people are rewriting their sure. resume with AI. Yeah, it's like sure. this kind but, of stuff. But the, but the thing was, that to the point he tried to make was that it didn't happen with one prompt. It took him weeks to get it right. Uh, mm. And he's like, this is why, as part of my animation process, these tools are going to be mm. helpful. But it's always going to need an animator's eye to know how to describe things, to tweak the models when they're not right, right? It's so it's language. not like, yeah, yeah it's, it's just learning a new language. At a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. So well, It's another we'll tool yeah. in, everyone's, in everyone's back pocket <clears throat> for whatever they're doing. Yep. So, yeah. I, we'll, you guys want to we'll see something real scary real quick? Ooh. AI! Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so your scary. social clip. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I just I, I, didn't mean, didn't mean to give you guys a heart attack. I I, oh, I just just I, I have a lot to say about AI, but one thing that is really frustrating me from a, uh, just a living on the internet basis, you yeah. can now not Google any type of animal yeah. of any kind without receiving seventy to eighty percent AI nonsense. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for I have so many friends that are uh animators or artists or scientists and they're trying to get uh, you know, even like creative people looking for a mood board of something or someone's looking for this yeah. reference for this particular type of animal. Yeah. yeah. And it's just flooded with yeah. AI nonsense. Fake news. Like just trying to get the reference and finding it correctly and sifting through all the tells yeah. of like, is this AI? Is this not AI? I mean yeah. it's 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 really a problem. Britannica yeah. Yeah. is just sitting over there going, mm, it's our time again. Like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> in, Car in Carta. Yeah. In Carta 2024. Yeah. Mm, For real. <laughs> here we come. You need a source? We got you. We got you. And it's true, though. Like, I, I think that would be great if there was – and there are in theory. But you're right. I, I think we've just reached a point where when we when the internet first started – we were posting photos and we were like, oh, God, like it it doesn't know the difference between this type of dog and this type of dog. And we're getting all this. And it's the same problem. It's just a new variation on that problem. And I think it'll just take time to sort of figure out. I mean, they know what's AI created and what's not kind of already. They're figuring that kind of stuff out. And Who it's scary. They. Uh, Google, for one, because it's screwing everything up for their algorithm. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think everybody uh, in the tech sector – it's really cool to make things, but it's not really cool when you realize that thing can now take money away from you. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we've reached that point. And so that's why you see Disney and, and these other companies, you know, like, for example, you love that uh, the, that example, the, the Star Trek set, right? And, and animating it. Um, Paramount wants a piece. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's one of those weird things where we'll, we'll see where that kind of all lands. But I, I yes, think go the ahead. Only I think the only bright side is that you'll always need somebody along the side of whatever it is. You'll yeah. always need somebody. For real. But For you'll real. need one somebody on the side versus eight people actually working on something. That's the concern. True. At least yeah. with screenwriting, that's the concern, is that they'll now, turn now, a bunch of scripts into the system. They pop out a variation of James Bond 493, and then they yeah. have, you know, fucking uh, Tony Kushner come in to, like, polish it up. You know, like, that's yeah. that's the concern. Yeah. Well, here's what I would say about that. I would say that if it's cheaper to make movies, they'll make more of them. And and that's that's one way to consider it too. Is there's eight people now get to work on eight different films instead of just not working. Um hopefully. But, you know, greedy bastards are greedy bastards, so we'll see what happens uh on that front. But that is for another day because we got to talk about trash people at theme parks with Beware our guest. <laughs> All right, we have some lovely story. Lovely, I guess we'll call them lovely stories. <laughs> Trashy story. Trashy, Trashy stories. stories. Look, I need the tea. I need the drama. Uh, we love it, uh, and we're going to begin with uh, this <laughs> one, where a drunk woman uh, uh, at Disney Springs. You know it's it's going to be good. Uh, Starts yes. a drunk woman at drunk Disney woman Springs. Disney Springs. Drunk Florida woman. Um, yeah. <laughs> drunk, drunk Florida woman in Disney Springs. Uh, on September 28th, uh, she was intoxicated at, uh, uh, not a surprise, uh, 
Her name is, I don't mind saying it because you're a fool. Marta Kaiser. Uh, of 46 of Lake Worth uh, was arrested on September 28th for disorderly intoxication uh, at Disney Springs. Uh, and the reason for it is basically they just <laughs> she was slurring her words and uh, they uh, she was kind of like annoying people. And so they were just going to help her leave, uh, you know, was kind of the idea. Like, hey, ma'am, let's let's get you out of here. Um, she had like a cut on her arm um, and and they were going to get her treated for that and then kind of like release her back into the wild or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's a capture and release situation. Yeah, catch yeah. And catch uh, and release. But she uh, uh, didn't necessarily want that, I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, she like fell on a, like in a planter at one point. Uh, and then, uh, she got really combative with the officers, uh, and she began repeating, uh, fuck you, take me to jail. I want to go to jail. So they did. Um, <laughs> I uh, they, do oblige. Uh, yeah. I mean, they were, the, the way it's sort of written out is that they say like, uh, this is from the orange county jail i think the deputy says they attempted to escort her off the property for uh her well-being but they never ordered her to leave uh, we'll never know if she would uh, have lawfully departed that's because she was arrested for wasting too many important resources and for cursing at the cops so um <laughs> what i will say is i love a i love a, a florida lawyer uh, and we got one here by the name of uh, his last name's Urig. I'm looking for his first name. Uh, let's see if I can find it here in the article. Uh, Hal Urig. Okay, Hal Urig. Uh, he says so. The cop said that she had glassy eyes and was being aggressive and smelled like alcohol and was slurring her speech. And all Urig comes out and says, and I and I quote. The odor of alcohol is no evidence of intoxication. Under Florida law, you are presumed to be able to drive safely with a blood alcohol level of 0.05. You will have an odor of alcohol beverage on your breath, but the Florida legislator legislature says you are not intoxicated. Glassy eyes are another police favorite, but glassy eyes are no evidence of intoxication, Ulrich says. Our deputy claims to have heard slurred speech, but as far as we know, he never heard Miss Kaiser's normal unslurred speech either before or after the rest. <laughs> um, my man is working for yeah. his money. My man is working. It's just, it's just so funny. Never uh, heard, heard unslurred speech. How, how can you, you know? say she's drunk? You could. This could just be her. Um <laughs> so uh it's pretty hard though to uh there's uh, there's also body cam footage of the entire thing. So uh yeah. Uh good on you. I mean at least she knew where she needed to go. We'll say that. That's to right. jail. To jail. Uh so the next one is very weird. Um this is because a food delivery driver has been trespassed and arrested uh because well I'll just read the story. Uh, his name is Tadio Miguel. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, that's a weird last name. Angel. Oh my goodness. Oh sorry. No, Basa <laughs> Colomenares. I think. Um, what a name. Uh, very lots of lots lots going on. Uh, anyway, Tadio, forty five, uh, was arrested on September twenty eighth after he made the f- <laughs> he he came up to the security gate at Fort Wilderness Lot or I would say Fort Wilderness. Uh, no, was it Wilderness Lodge or Af- uh, it was Animal was Kingdom a, Lodge. Animal Kingdom um, Lodge. And he went up to the resort gate and they asked him what he was there for. And he said to blow up the resort. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. <laughs> and the security officer said, excuse me. And he said to blow up the resort. And then it, uh, what the report, arrest report said. <laughs> So what the arrest report says is that the driver once again stated that he was there to blow up the resort, that his truck was that his truck was full of explosives, and that he giggled. And after making these threats, he then stated he was just a delivery driver delivering food. Um, clearly, Disney was like, "Nah, bro, <laughs> like you don't get to go uh, into the resort." Uh, and a, a explosive uh, canine, Disney's explosive canine uh, unit. 
Um, the way they – this is a bad uh, – WDWNT.com, of course, has uh, put Ugh. this article up. But this is uh, – uh, Trashy stories from a trashy site. Well, I tell you what. there's They, they cover everything. So uh, it's, hard, it's hard to they beat do. it. Uh, but the, this is a sentence I don't think they meant to write, which is a Disney's explosives canine, which sounds like – I know what they're saying, <laughs> but it sounds like the canine it just explodes if you need it to. Um so anyway, it swept the the Corolla, the Toyota Corolla, and did not find any evidence of bombs or weapons. Uh, he was trespassed, uh, so he couldn't return, and then he was arrested and taken to jail, uh, charged with second degree felony, and is currently being represented by the public defender's office. Like my man, JK, JK. How long did he insist <laughs> that he was there to blow up the hotel? Like, I mean, he did it twice. He goes <clears throat> to blow up the yeah. <laughs> the did resort. I stutter? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did I stutter? He cleared his throat and was like, "To blow <clears> up." <throat> I'm gonna. He said there were explosives in his car. Like it's. He like just he, meant things that give you explosive diarrhea. It's different. I mean, he's it's not, not the wrong. Same thing. He's not wrong. Um, I don't know where. I mean, they don't say he was intoxicated. No, they he don't just say being he, an idiot. He just I, what a fuck. What a thing find to out. say. What yeah, a thing well, to come say. On. Can you imagine? Um, no. Anyway, the next story is very kind of strange. It actually ends sad. In, in, in sad, but also there's a there's a point that I want to I want to make about this one. So this is uh, and uh, this happened at the uh, transportation and ticket center, and an an eighty year old man uh, was there. His name, uh, you know, I'm not even going to name him because it's not really his fault. Anyway, um, he's like an engineer in real life. He has like a job and uh, no criminal record whatsoever. And uh, basically he's 80 years old and he has a uh, incontinence issue and uh, he was peeing in his pants and uh, basically uh, was told he, he went to find uh, somebody so they could tell them where the restroom was at the TTA and uh he has a language barrier issue as well he's argentinian uh and uh basically he wanted help uh to find the restroom and it says as the employee was relying to him this is from the the i, I believe the police report as the employee was relying Relaying to him the information, Fernando started uh, – well, that's his name, but whatever – started to lose control of his bodily fluids and began to urinate in his pants. Uh, he proceeded to go behind some bushes to finish relieving himself. One cast member walking to her vehicle in the parking lot saw his penis and told authorities she was both shocked and made f- to feel uncomfortable by the situation. I, okay. Sure. Sure. I get that. Um, another cast it's member headed – Yeah. Uh, another cast member headed to the break room uh, by the TTC – um security office and uh basically uh saw it as well and then security came out and was notified that it was happening and ran up to the guy and immediately it says that the guard immediately ran out of the door of the security office and observed the the I, I don't know why they call him a light-skinned hispanic man i guess they just were making it very clear light-skinned hispanic male with his penis exposed and urinating A security guard told the man uh, in both English and Spanish to stop and directed him to the bathroom. But he appeared to dismiss uh, the instructions, the uh, arrest report says. Now, I just want to make a point here about this. If I'm peeing and you come up to me and say, stop peeing. It's gonna sting. I can't do that. <laughs> it's not how it's, it's being works. It's gonna sting a real bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I'm gonna have to. How do I put this delicately? Uh, squeeze the hose if I'm going to uh, make it to the bathroom. I suppose. Uh, I can't get it. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. Oh boy. Um, hey, that rhymed. Good job. Hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know. So I think that's a little strange to ask the man. Let's not act like he's refusing there. How old is um, he again? 80, 80 years old. Yeah. There's oh, no geez. controlling that once you're that age. My guy no. my guy was trying to finish off in a bush. So what seems to happen was the security guard did not press charges, but the two cast members did. And like, hey, cast members, chill the fuck out. Because yeah. like this is an 80-year-old man trying to pee yeah, in a bush. Come on, you know what he's doing. Empathy. Yeah, he's not waving his dick at did, you. Come on. Well, I guess they the que- I guess the question is begs to be asked: Is like, did those cast members know 
that this 80-year-old man with a language barrier was also incontinent. I would assume they did by the time that they pressed charges. Yeah. Yeah, okay, because if, if they knew all of that leading up to the to the charge, and this is hard for – it was – also, was the cast member uh, – like, were they guys or – female I, they didn't say. I feel like that would probably think. change their perspective on it just a little bit and four guys talking about it and having our opinions on it yeah. may be you know true just that's yeah. just want to point true, that true. out valid no no it's true. valid valid yeah. uh but i you know i don't imagine this 80 year old man is is lustily gazing off at cast members as he <laughs> pisses his pants um he shook it four times yeah. Yeah. Four time. i wish sometimes i could I be just, done in this four is the times. kind of thing where it, it should have been like once they knew all the things it should have been like just dismissed move and on. like this not even guy. written as a report no it's Nothing. just come on mm-hmm. now to yeah. the guy if you have that issue wear some depends if you're gonna go out for the day like i i know some people don't do that but Maybe you should, but regardless, like that's kids have accidents yeah. in parks, and you see parents like holding their kids into the bush to all pee the because, time, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like just it's yeah. just a it's a penis, people. It's just a penis. It's not yeah. gonna hurt you. <laughs> I mean, it can, but <laughs> not in this circumstance. It's just some pee. Yeah. It, the pee is the pee is not gonna hurt you. The pee, the pee I, will be I, fine. Yeah. I just wonder, like, how accurate is this report? Of what the experience was. I mean, based on I mean, the fact it, that people yeah. are, it's it says the one-eyed monster darted out of the zipper <laughs> yeah. and attacked the police officer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just curious, like how, because like I, I to get to the point of filing a lawsuit for something like this, it seems well, it seems like they severe. were. Yeah, let me read, let me triple check again here, but it seems like they were go. Maybe they were going to. They wanted to pursue criminal charges against them. Um, so it doesn't but, necessarily mean they did. But I mean, it seems to me, if I read this correctly, the state attorney's office filed a notice it was no longer pursuing criminal charges. So that was a little bit later. So they they, they chilled out, but like, come on. Um, yeah, I wish this had, you and know, they trespassed I get it. Him. And they trespassed him. He can't go no, back. No, did they really? It's what it says at the end of the article. It's like, that is just... My I man's mean, not going to make it back anyway, probably. Yeah, I was about to say but, that. <laughs> he ain't going to make it back anyway. He's 80 years old. Yeah, and from Argentina, it's not like, well, it doesn't seem... it From what I gathered, it, it doesn't seem like he was like a regular it, or anything. Here's the thing that it's bugs weird. me the it's most. It's so strange if, to... If it, had been a, if it had been a guest or a, a parent complaining that their kid saw it or something i would give a modicum of uh, of agreement sure. about okay you're allowed to complain if you're a cast member they should have grabbed this guy by the arm and taken him to the bathroom and showed him where to go and then you run to the merch shop and get a bunch of towels yeah and and yep. and help the fucking man like that's yeah. just ugh. That, so uh, that's just yeah it's or, it, puritanical yeah. society with, with some, man. somebody that needs help yeah, yeah he, he was needed help needed really, help. really badly. He we needed help, pee. and he we had a pee. hard time telling it, telling them that because of the language barrier, mm-hmm. and that just made it for a much more complicated situation because everything got lost, yeah. literally in translation, because people I, are just showing up and saying, yeah. "I saw this man pull his penis out and start peeing," and nobody was, knows the context why. And that I sucks. assume, I guess the only fault in this man is that look, if you're already have pissed your pants, just kind of keep pissing your pants, you yeah. know. Like, <laughs> like I guess you don't need to take it out. That I mean, point. that's historically what I've done. All, <laughs> all I know is peeing your pants is the coolest. Is what I've been <laughs> told. <laughs> if, if peeing your pants is the coolest, then I'm Miles Davis. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. You know, beyond that, I I think this is one of those scenarios that this is not the probably not the first time this has happened at Disney. Uh, and my guess is is that this is just now we've reached a point in society where we know everything and that's a problem too um so uh you know we we have this to be where our guest um because i don't want you to get pissed on but that's it this guy didn't do anything wrong uh, but we all got pissed off we got pissed off for this man yes absolutely <laughs> um but now ladies and gentlemen we do have to bring some justice uh in this court because it's time for rat court <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, 
Rat Court is now in session. The Rat-tastical Judge Nathan Hartman presiding. Order, order, order in my court. Uh, so we have one case in front of uh, Rat Court today, uh, and I think it will be a swift one. Um, subbing Guilty. in, subbing in <laughs> for our court reporter is Bry. Bry, what do we have? Uh, truly a fascinating uh, case here. Um, again, returning back to our beloved restaurant, Asaurus, uh restaurant at Disney's Animal Kingdom, a uh, former Walt Disney cast member evidently was fired uh, earlier this year in June and somehow still maintained access to the uh, software that changes the digital menus in the restaurant and had continued changing the menu remotely after he was fired as a means of That's retaliation. Awesome. I love it. Uh, apparently it's most funny. of it... It's, it's funny it's, until this one part. Yeah, yeah so okay. most of okay, it dang. was... And again, like most of it was pretty subtle until the point where he then changed the font to Windings, and it was at that point that people... <laughs> It was then and only then, actually, that they realized that something was amiss. Oh, my um, God, that's so great. I love that so much. <laughs> yes, and uh, evidently when uh, the menu changes to Windings, you can no longer see that something contains nuts uh, as the text oh. becomes illegible. And at that point, the food item becomes a threat to people's lives. Well, uh, am I correct uh, by he, saying he also changed he, some of he the literally, allergens? He, it said he changed the allergen warnings, too. To foods well, that, 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 that that's have what's going to happen when you change that's the whole <laughs> text. I think, like, but I think oh. the wingdings was just the first thing, and th- th- that's what made them notice. I think he but that, added allergens and changed like. Does it say that? As well, yeah. It said uh, alleged alle- alleged other changes included profanity and changes <laughs> to allergen warnings. Allegedly, allegedly, yeah. allegedly, of course. I'm just saying that, like, technically, on a legal basis, if you change an yes. item from something that is legible Correct. and says peanut, peanut allergies to wingdings... That's enough. It, Correct. Yeah. It that no longer... Yeah. It, it's it, yeah. You are Correct. fucked at that point. So, um, yeah. it, it, the, based on the information that I have, here? it could be as simple as that, based on the information who, yeah. that I have. Who, who, who is suing who in this, this case? Uh, I believe it's the Walt Disney Company. Yeah. I'm fluent in wingdings, so I would have been yeah, safe. Yeah, well, you've been okay. <laughs> I believe the uh, Walt Disney oh, Company. Uh, <laughs> Wingdings. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. I don't believe this article no, it, says. No, does it, it does. The top. This is why it's in Rat Court. Don't tell me it's not in Rat Court. A former Disney customer is being sued by changing menu information after being fired. But who's suing? Probably uh, Disney. We're saying this probably, but I don't see yes, that. Said it or, or just or just Restaurantosaurus. I like the yeah, idea that these individual businesses. It's uh, Dr. Seeker. He ate some peanuts. Yes. And he's upset. Yes. Uh, he's also saying that that uh, the, the, his lawyer is saying that the, the, the he has a disability that he believes impacted his termination, so they're he's they're probably trying to get to a you know plea bargain or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, the FBI raided his house and ra- and seized all the electronics the, that contained evidence. The FBI of his raided his house. Yeah, I mean my guys damn- out there like changing crazy stuff. Uh, that's wild, man. That's so crazy. Yeah. Oh, I do like that the lawyer does say the allegations acknowledge that no one was injured or harmed. I look forward to vigorously presenting my client's side of the story. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> was Make that your sent, money. Was that sent written in Wingdings? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the whole brief is in Wingdings. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, there there's at least two now. Wingdings in this whole story. That's <laughs> the lawyer and then and this guy. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, as we know, it's Rat Court, though. Uh, is this a legit uh, or sus uh, suing? Uh, what, what say you, Dave? Is this legit or sus? Legit. Don't do it's that shit. Legit. You were fired. Uh, Bry, what about you? 100% legit. Of course. And Gabe, are you a good person or not? Straight to hell with him. All right. There we go. Uh, we agree. <laughs> Straight to jail. Um, Straight to jail. Straight I to will. Jail. Uh, what is my summon? What is my... Uh... What am I going to give this guy? Uh, uh, he must um, only eat, eat the food for at Restaurantosaurus. <laughs> no, it's good. Some of it's good. Some of it's all right. It's a pretty, okay. it's a pretty right. gnarly, uh, gnarly. He must. Uh, he must. Uh, he, must uh, he must lay under the uh, bulldozer as it starts construction on on Dino Land. Uh, <laughs> says I. That seems a bit severe, Nathan. Death. 
Well, you know the what? Sentence this, of death. This court is this court Adjourned. is uh, <laughs> death by <laughs> judge had a bad day. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. So it is a legit. <laughs> And that, of course, was a, a lovely, a lovely short episode of uh, Rat Court. We always love it. Uh, and we are going now. Uh, it's been a little while, but we're going to go to the mailbag. You know it's nice when the postman has a letter in his sack for you. All right, Dave. What, what what's in the old mailbag? What's 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 going on over there? We have a lovely, lovely letter from uh, one of our favorite fans who writes us a lot and always has wonderful things to say. That is Joser. Hi, Joser. Um, he he wrote uh, and said regarding the Cake Bake Shop, which I guess just opened on the yes, is it on this the is a walk? portion of a. Uh, he had several different comments. I picked this one as my fave. Yeah, this was good. I said after recording the pod, reviews began coming in. Theming is somewhere between the Great Gatsby Dynasty and the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> which is really good uh while edible 24 karat gold is flecked and dusted on all food items yeah i'm so not the targeted tax bracket of customers for this place i've seen the reviews and it's like a slice of cake and a coffee is like 35 dollars it's insane no thank you it's, insane. it's no, ridiculous you. it's ridiculous they would make st- they would make so much money if they just actually did a Golden Girls cafe. Uh, oh, my God. Lord. So much so money. So much money. Or the, Grand, that would be the Grand Floridian. There I used think. to be one in New York, I think. Or was it here in L.A.? Really? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it like a pop-up, in New York. right? Probably like a pop-up it or endured a local for joint. for some time, yeah. Oh, huh. we need that gold. Got to bring it back. Got to bring it back. I need some Italian food, too, at this place. That's a, Okay. We're good there. That sounds good. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for writing again. We always appreciate it. And then last, but of course not least, it is our good friend, the Astuter Computer Poem of the Week. That's why I'm a router for me computer. Everybody needs a friend. What? <laughs> oh, Astuter, it's so good to see you. And of course, you always come with some some interesting stuff. Uh, you know, you, you were here. You've listened to all the news. What do you think? What... What what is some uh, interesting news uh, that you could create a little haiku out of this week? Elders' quiet plea in Disney's bushes concealed. Relief misunderstood. (laughs) Very good. It seems uh, Studer agrees with us. Uh, and we appreciate that. And that, of course, is a another great episode of Rat Castle uh, in the can. It's produced, of course, by myself, and then uh, uh, Sara and Victoria also help uh, with the pre-production and the social media. Gabe, where can people find you online? You can find all of our nonsense at Theme Park Duo everywhere. It's me and my wife. We are the duo. We covered theme entertainment experiences all throughout SoCal, and sometimes we venture out to the East Coast like we did this year with HHN 31, 32. I don't remember. I lost count. Either which way, <laughs> you can follow us at Theme Park Duo. We also have ThemeParkDuo.com. You can find us there. Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, you can, you can of course, find everything Rat Castle uh, at RatCastlePod.com. And you should now grab your belongings and exit. But make sure that you're done peeing and and exit to the left. Will you stop this foolishness? What foolishness would you like to see? Will you get out of here? This has been a production of 710 Media.